Okay, so uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, welcome all to the second day of our international workshop on energy system-wide analysis of net zero pathways. So yesterday we heard overviews of the current status of system-wide modeling and planning from Nigeria and Indonesia. And in this first session today, we will have an opportunity to hear from the National Energy Commission of Chile, the Energy Secretariat of the Ministry of Economy of Argentina, and the Ministry of Electricity from Egypt. This session will be moderated by Sadie Cox, who is the Deputy of Country Programs for Net Zero World and a Senior Analyst at National Renewable Energy Laboratory. Sadie, go ahead and unmute yourself and let me turn it over to you to introduce our first speaker. Thank you, Clarice, and thank you all so much for joining us for this first session today, focused on energy system analysis and modeling efforts with Chile, Argentina, and Egypt. I'm very pleased and honored to serve as the moderator for this session. Today, we will kick off with a presentation from esteemed colleagues from Chile, and I'm very happy to introduce three presenters from Chile today. The first presenter will be Gerson Reyes, who leads International Affairs and Knowledge Management for the National Energy Commission. He will be joined by Javier Toro Cabrera, who is head of the Sub-Department of Electrical Markets and the Energy Commission, and Fernando Chong, who is a professional in the Hydrocarbon Department also within the National Energy Commission. And it will be great for participants to add questions in the chat that we can address after the presentation. So Gerson, it will be great if you can please turn on your microphone and camera for your presentation. Thank you, Marie. And good morning all, or good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, the thing is that it's a good day for you. Uh, I know, Sadi, if you can put this in the full screen, the presentation, the full size, and Yes, we will do it we'll, we'll do in, a minute, in a second. Okay. And my name is Gerson Reyes from the National Energy Commission, like uh, Sal said. Uh, um, it's with me, Fernando Chong and Javier Toro. It's my colleagues from the CNE. And uh, there's, in, I, I, I follow the, the, uh, the presentation, I do the presentation mass, but uh, in, any, in any case, my colleague, we um, uh, say something during the presentation according to, uh, to, to, to say more specific details. And then during the, the, the question, the, the, after the presentation, uh, they uh, could interview in, in, in the, for the, the answers. Um, Sadi, please, the next one. This is a small agenda. It's the agenda of the presentation. There's eight topics that we want to cover for to announce to give you an overview of the 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 matters that uh, we are talking about in during this workshop. The first one is the challenges, the general statistics, the infrastructure, institutional framework, and energy policy. The and some tools that we use here in Chile, like for to increase, in order to increase and they grow, the, it help us for the, this kind of uh, grow up of the renewable energies, is an, an energy tender uh, within process and the small generation systems, uh, or the carbonization program, uh, the transition, transmission deployment, that's another issue in the new demands and e-fields. Um, next one, sorry, please. This is a, the, one uh, a way of to to get an overview of the all the, the challenges it help us to understand uh, what why and when it was necessary the tools for to develop this decarbonization uh, or to work in during this decarbonization transition on the new energy transition there's several aspects but we want to resume give give you a, a brief resume about this and the first one is a false expansion and competitiveness for renewable energies. In our case, the natural Chilean potential for renewable energies, the development helps to accelerate its incorporation into the matrix. In our case, uh, we have uh, in the natural resources, we have the capacity uh, uh, in, for, in the case of solar, 
It is estimated with a potential of one terawatt, but using a low performance of PV voltage. And additionally, if we consider the wind in the, uh, in the south extreme in the Patagonia, uh, the capacity factor is reached over 50%. And then the, the resources, the natural resources, it's enough for develop uh, this kind of technologies and the competitiveness given by the regulatory uh, aspect that we, we change uh, help us to, to increase this, the, the capacity in a competitiveness way, not in a preference, because here in, in, in Chile, there's not a, like a preference for some technology in, like a, in another one. No, it's just for the prices in, in, in this, com it has a competition or not, or competitiveness or not, getting into the electrical market. Uh, another thing, important thing that helped to the renewable energies uh, is the economy of scale. And the low cost and the regulatory innovation that introduced in this one, um, help to, the, to this increase in the renewable energies. Um, and in particular, in the right side, it's a picture when you can see the tender energy tender bidding process uh, for for the uh, regulated cl clients, where uh, the evolution told you from the 2012 uh, uh, a date uh, the decrease of the prices, but in the decrease the prices and we reach in the last. Uh, in the last uh, ten energy tender bidding process, a decrease in 82% according to the highest price that we we uh, we get. It. Uh, another important thing in the the second issue is how how do you uh, to harmonize the average time between the grid development versus energy demand? Uh, one of the main things here. Uh, is the electrification of the demand is dynamic, everybody knows, but it's faster than the grid development, deployment, and the transmission is at this transmission and the distribution level. Uh, an example of this is uh, the electromobility for public transportation. Why in this specific issue? Because our, um, our main policy related with the, 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 the electromobility was focused uh, in the, during the beginning into the public transportation. And then uh, just one result of this, I talk about a little bit in, in the next slide, but in the electromobility, we, we add uh, one third of the, all the public transportation just in, the, uh, in, the, in Santiago, in the main city, in the capital city uh, in, one, in one year. And during 2022, we have more public electric, uh, electrical power, uh, I'm sorry, electrical uh, public transportation, uh, which with reach almost uh, one third of all the, 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 the public transportation system in just in one year. Then the, the demand coming from electromobility is intensive and in a short time it's uh, deployed and then it's, it's an issue. And, the, and another is the, how do you, you can respond from the transmission view or transmission perspective to the deployment of times for renewable energies um, when you can deploy a small generation unit, uh, less than nine megawatts, but it, I'm not talking about the residential generation, it's a small unit generation. Then it is another main issue and a very important tool uh, for, for uh, increase the, the participation of renewable energies. And the last one, and the new requires and flexibility and management of resources. Uh, from the flexibility strategy, then we talk about it and a flexibility strategy, how we can be prepared uh, in advance uh, according to the, the, the decarbonization and the introduction of renewable energies. And in this case, we develop a, a flexibility strategy when we cover some specific topics in order to uh, go in, 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 in incorporate into the system, into the market, the storage system, uh, recognized as part of the infrastructure and 
Oh, and we started this uh, uh, conversation about oh, the, this option and this um, uh, about the, the green fuels like a green hydrogen. And, and according to use, like, like in, uh, in a way to say, it's a way to say this one, but because you can promote in this one the green energy in a virtuous combination with the renewable energies, it's natural. Okay, and then, yes, next please, Sari. Next please. And now some, some um, statistics, an overview. This is a Chilean uh, GHG inventory until 2016. You can see there some two, two graphs on the left side. Uh, where mainly the principal uh, emissions coming from the electrical sector and the transport sector, uh, which are 56%, almost 56% of all the CO2 emissions. And uh, in 2016, we see that it's unnecessary in order to re reduce these emissions um, to, to get about, to generate a plan or program for decarbonization. And then, uh, uh, we start in that in that day how to develop this one, and in the next slides I talk in a little bit more about this. And another and another thing in the in the right side we have the neutral carbon scenario to 2050, uh, where it's in, very interesting here that we are um, uh, in our projection the use of hydrogen electromobility. And the CCPs, the coal, the, the outage of the coal power plants, reach more than 50% of our target. And then this is interesting because it's, it could be um, we can get it. And and then uh, if but if you plus to this one, uh, uh, you if you add uh, the sustainable industry, the the construction sustainable. And in another measures, uh, it's an uh, you can we can uh, get and reach this um, this uh, target. Uh, next one, sorry, please. Uh, in the electrical system, the evolution of this one is uh, uh, this data. Uh, it's at March twenty two, and you can see now three three systems. The first one is a national electrical system. It's, a, a, it's one system from the north of, of country in the green. It's, it's a, in the map. A, in, the, in the extreme of south, we have the SEA. It's a, a, a ISEN system. It's a small system. And Magallanes, it's called SEM, a, in the capital levels. And then the installed capacity is there. And in the right side, we can see in the graph uh, the evolution of the electricity generation by technology. And you can see from 2018 to, to January of this year, the increase of solar in the um, uh, yellow uh, in, in the yellow color. Then it is increasing because uh, 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 um, because the the issues and the, and the things that I talking about uh, before. And the, now in the bottom, we, you can see the projects under construction and the projection according to operation start of this uh, unit. Uh, this data is uh, until March 22. And then we expect to the 2024, uh, uh, 4.7 uh, gigawatts of new installed capacity. And 73% uh, of the, this new installed capacity, capacity it's a photovoltaic. And that's very interesting in this, in this age. Um, next one, Sally, please. This is another uh, statistic. Uh, this is a, a in-house uh, gas emissions from electricity. This is just a trend, but you can see here how it's uh, um, 
down, it's going down because of the decarbonization process. And then now it's emission factor into the natural electrical system. Next one, Sally, please. Uh, now I talk about the institutional framework. There's three main institutions. Is the energy ministry who is in charge of the energy policies, the National Energy Commission, who is the regulator of the energy system, and the Superintendencia de Electricidad y Combustible, who is the supervisor of the all, all the energy system. And there's an, another from 2016, we have the TSO, the new TSO is infrastructure, institutional uh, infrastructure, the new TSO. We include the the or, uh, old um, two uh, systems appear in the in the in, the, in almost all the country which was interconnected and appear this new TSO. This is the Coordinador Electrico Nacional. Under the TSO, an over the, the overview uh, who see in, in, in the system the Coordinador is the generation transmission. In distribution and the clients, but the biggest clients. The role of the generation is that in Chile, the generation is private uh, with free prices and with an open access. And the transmission is a private sector too with regulated prices and with an open access. All these issues is coming from the law. And in the distribution level, you can see there uh, capital letters PMGD, less than nine megawatts. It's more, it means a small generation system and not in the uh, residential level. In the residential level, we have net billing scheme, but this kind of small generation system, it's in a level, in a highest, a little highest level, but it, these units are connect, could be interconnected or connected to the distribution level at the distribution level. This is interesting. And then in the distribution, we have a private, it's private, it's a natural monopoly with a regulated prices. And at this one, in this level in distribution, we have uh, by the law uh, 2005, uh, we have the energy tender bidding process. According to the increase of the demand of the regulated sector in this, in the distribution, is a process leading by CNE. CNE uh, it's an open process with the participation, with open participation and regulator. And then all every company who wants to, to participate in this tender, uh, um, it's open to, to the technologies, it's neutral technology. And uh, for for this one to to in order to to prepare this this process, CNE release energy tender bidding report, including the demand prospective report for regulate, regulated clients. Then this is a way uh, of when the companies start the uh, uh, their participation. And the demand prospective could be claimed to the expert panel. The expert panel, who is in the bottom, this is part of the, the institutional framework. It's like a court where they, if you, if any agent in, into the into the market has a claim and, uh, against another one, uh, can and they can go to the expert panel, and then all this um, um, is you in this in like a court. You can claim and and and, and all the, this problems uh, has um, a fast uh, solution and, and there's no you this um, oh I don't know if the same uh, uh, judicialization there's not a judicialization into the into the market the last one is free clients the free clients are uh, this kind of client, the biggest clients into the market with high demand, high, higher than three megawatts, you know, higher than five megawatts in the case of uh, the, the clients are free clients. Um, okay, next, Sadi, please. This is a transition to the decarbonization. Uh, we start on 20, 
2012 with some uh, official uh, uh, things that we start here in Chile. And we follow a, a way during the time where in the, with an energy policy in 2014, an energy agenda, uh, the first uh, long-term energy planning, and then there's another uh, last issue that there in like a, a electromobility strategy, flexibility strategy, the green generation and hydrogen national strategy, and the new electromobility strategy released uh, last year, 2021, and the uh, green uh, hydrogen project uh, for development um, guide. Uh, uh, who was delivered in 2021 too. And now, in the, now in, we are uh, under the develop of the new agenda for the per this period, the period of the, the, the government of President Gabriel Boric and for 2022 to 2026. These agendas, like uh, the same that the Mr. Uh, President Sebastián Piñera uh, or the president Michel Bachelet, this agenda is how to follow the energy policy and how to uh, help us to, to guide how to in, 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 um, to follow the, the the new requirements according to the the the, the new data and the new um, fuels like hydrogen or the the strategies like uh, electromobility and others. Um, with a, a highest, a really a high participation coming from the people and a social participation and coming from the people, companies and other ones, academy, et cetera. Uh, the next one, Sammy, please. Here, it's a PELP, the energy planning in the long term. The last update was in 2020. This is in the law. And the general law of electrical uh, services is in the uh, is estab established the energy planning, which updated every five years, but every year it's, uh, it's updated to some, some topics in order to, to get like a, an, um, to useful for the another processes like energy, like a transmission um, expansion plan. And then here, uh, the last scenarios was developed six scenarios, these possible scenarios, uh, with all the, the information get it coming from the, 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 the public consultants and the, uh, the, the sessions with, the, with people, with the companies, with, with uh, the academy, um, session works with, the, with them. And then was built these scenarios and uh, the results, the last result you can see there, the, according to the scenarios, uh, the total installed capacity in, at 2050, the additional capacity in the both uh, periods 21 to 2055, when you can see there how the coal carbon plant, uh, the outage of the, the CPPs. Okay, next one, Sally, please. Um, Harrison, I just wanted to let you know too, we have about 10 minutes left for your presentation, just so you know. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I go uh, faster than, okay. Uh, this is a methodology where you use two models, uh, LIB and MAMEVA, and the whole the interaction is coming from the data. Uh, next one, Sati, please. Next one. This is the energy, tender, the energy supply tender bidding process when you can see a uh, in the um, uh, orange or, 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 or pink, I don't know how, how do you see this color, the new, the future investment opportunities with energy uh, coming in, in because the contracts are ended and according to the, the, fine, the contract uh, uh, end, and then you can, we need to, to do another tender bidding process for the new contracts. And then it means that in the, in the, in the past, in the previous results, you can see how this the distribution of the energies and technologies according to the country. Uh, and the last one was in 2021. And uh, the next one, Sadi, please. These results you can see in the, in the bottom, in the yellow, you can the, the, the uh, lowest prices was in the last one. And we have the, the, the lower price in the history in the last, in the last, um, um, 
uh, supply energy tenders. Next one, Sally, please. Next one, please. This is a statistic about the small generation. If you can see, we have from 2016 at 2022, in March, we have more than 1.7 gigawatts. And, and it is increasing in month to uh, a month. It's a really, um, a, a really important a, a tool during the for the introduction of this uh, um, policy in, in, into the, in order to, to follow the, the decarbonization of the neutral the set the, the zero path, path, uh, zero emissions. I'm sorry. Uh, Sadi, next one, please. Next one. The decarbonization the one coming from the agreement between the Chilean government and Jenkos uh, in order to don't initiate any core project without carbon capture system and CO2 storage system or equivalent technologies and the retirement of all CPPs units at 2040 was a, a initial schedule. Uh, it, it's coming because there's some feasibility studies and the accomplish of Jenkos given the base of the, this agreement and the early retire for CPPs was created for this one and uh, strategic reserve status, uh, like a transitory mechanism for the progressive adoption while clean energy uh, uh, sources or units replace the, the, the old CPPs and the transmission project are deployment. Which kind of transmission project? We are uh, under uh, uh, start the construction, the HVDC, um, it's a project uh, in the uh, in the north uh, who considered 2,000 megawatts by pole to pole in order to bring all the energy coming from the north to the central part of the, the country to the demand. And next one, please. This is the main measures coming from the, the uh, energy flexi the flexibility strategy. The three pillars, the market design for flexibility system, a regulatory framework for storage system and new flexible technologies, and the third pillar, the flexible system operation. Next one, Sadi, please. This is a, the, the program until now, the, the Jenkos was at uh, every year according to the reduced CPPs. And then uh, from the first pro, uh, plan of the program released in 2019, until the, the, the now in, in 2021, 22, uh, we, uh, we go more than uh, or less, more than 65% of the world CPPs is expected to, to, to 2026. But this depends on the, 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 operation, the operational uh, um, of the system, the operation of the system and uh, the requirements, possible requirements to, to uh, for for the CPPs, if are, they are in um, a strategic uh, reserve status. Okay, next one, Sadi, please. Next one, and this is transmission process where we include the PELP energy planning for the annual transmission expansion. And how the, the the several institutions, uh, public institutions, uh, works. Uh, next one, please, Sadi. Uh, we have two uh, regulatory tools uh, for this one. One is the annual for the expansion of transmission, the annual transmission expansion plan, where uh, it, it could um, be five years, at least five years from you propose the, 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 the transmission or you propose the, 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 the transmission project, until you start your transmission, uh, start the operation of the transmission project. But there, there are another way, another issue, another tool is a uh, urgent infrastructure. It's, uh, in that case, just we can get three years in that case. But three years is much more than the uh, uh, generation or, or, or the the times that we need sometimes. Uh, next one, please. And her son, um, we have about four minutes left now, so thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Sadi. This one is the electromobility, the national strategic, the, the, in 2021, this is a picture for the advance from 2016 until now. 
And the, the focus here and the or advice for to develop an electromobility issues to, to go and, and move in this case is the focus on the transport, the public transport in uh, 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 transportation. And then in the bottom, the right side, you can see that uh, there, there are three uh, tender transportation and uh, tender bidding process for transportation. And the, the first one was uh, released, it uh, was finalized, it's okay, was great results. And in the total megawatt, you can see in the beginning, we, we think that all the replace of transportation was more, more almost 200 megawatts, but in the, according to the introduced efficiencies, and we work with the um, um, transportation ministry, and reduce more than 50% in, in, in to the result, to the final result. That is a big issue. And, and we are very happy with, with that because it, there, it means not more stress to the grid and reduce the stress and, and, and improve the quality services and, and, and any, in, any, in any way and, and, kind, and another kind of result. And we are following very close to this uh, uh, development of the electro into the electromobility and it applies to some regulation modifications into the into the uh, grid code and and to, to develop another um, uh, regulations for the uh, infrastructure in charge infrastructure okay next one sandy please uh, this is a first approximation on natural and green and uh, hydrogen strategy. All this is under review, and uh, but this is an, like just a picture of, of the first strategy about uh, green hydrogen, and we develop in the it's under review on the um, uh, uh, the, the the regulation for the infra green hydrogen infrastructure uh, 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 now and. We expect that it could be released during the next month. But until now, every green hydrogen project is developed according to a guide uh, developed specifically for the new projects in these cases. Following this, this strategy and, and, and any other uh, new policy uh, in, the, in this in this issue. Next one, Sally, please. Okay, final comments in the, my, my last minute. Uh, we have have been progressively advancing towards a modernization of the energy sector towards a clean matrix in a responsible and coordinated way towards carbon neutrality, the carbon neutrality is our target. We are carrying out the decarbonization process in a responsible manner and through an unprecedented firm agreement, we sign an agreement between the state and the private sector, generating an accelerate decarbonization commitment uh, with an, an our first um, target is uh, or, or the final target is uh, 2040 in the case of the carbonization. Will be um, in, in advance, but we don't know. It depends how it develops. Uh, we have had a successful the last um, the last uh, uh, energy tender bidding process. We uh, have a record prices of 13 dollars per megawatt in an average decrease of. 25, 27% compared to the previous level awards in the previous um, in the previous tender bid process. Uh, the regulatory modification comes to um, respond to the health contingency and its consequence, the climate change, the normal situation of the system, in order to grant, uh, to grant flexibility and facilitate the deployment and development of generation and transmission projects. And our last remark is the, the virtuous combination of renewable energies and the production of uh, hydrogen facilities developed uh, for, for this, in order to, to, to this incipient market, such a, a green hydrogen by a um, mature market, such as a, 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 such the electrical uh, or electricity market. It, uh, very good, this virtues between the renewable energies and the green, Hydrogen could be a big issue and a, a real great opportunity for Chile in this case. Um, okay, next one, Sadi, please. Muchas gracias. Thank you. 
Excellent. Thank you so much, Hassan, for that very informative um, presentation. Um, it was a great way to kick off the session. Um, did want to turn now to one of the questions in the chat um, before we move to the next presenter. So um, we have a question here from Zarar Khan from Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. And he said, thank you for the very insightful presentation. I wanted to know to what degree water resources are a concern in the de decarbonization plans. For example, some of the scenarios show significant CSP, a high water consumption technology, which has the best potential in regions two and three, which are already suffering from very high water scarcity. Okay. Okay. Now in the, the question I want to invite to my colleagues in the case and who wants to, to, to get to take this, this question about the water, the use of water and the and the and the scenarios of what it uses, I don't know, Javier. Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, about the question, um, I don't have an, a number about uh, what uh, kind of degree of water resources uh, in case of CSP, but uh, I think uh, it's maybe it's not an Important number because uh, uh, some developers are uh, telling that that uh, also just not the number of investment costs uh, are important. Uh, uh, it's imp that's important uh, in our country, and and also we are looking for. Uh, Another kind of technology like uh, renewables with uh, storage. So maybe uh, we have uh, another plan in that case. Okay, um, thank you so much, Javier. And thank you so much, Herson, again, for that excellent presentation. Um, I think we will move now to our next presentation. If we have time at the end, we'll, we'll come back to some of the other questions in the chat box. But again, thank you so much. Um, so um, we will now move to our next presentation and I'm very pleased to introduce Gustavo Barbaram um, from the National Directorate of Energy Project Evaluation and Planning at the Subsecretariat of Energy Planning in Argentina. So Gustavo, it will be great if you can please turn your microphone and camera for your presentation. Thank you so much. Hello, Sadi. Well, it was uh, it was a pleasure to see the the, the Chilean methodology. Um, I have a, a lot of uh, I have a lot of friends from Chile that they used to work in the in, in that process, and I know how serious they are working towards the energy transition. So it was a pleasure for for, for me to to hear them. They are still on on that road. Uh, well. I will uh, I will start with with the, with the next one. Uh, please, the next one. Here we have uh, no uh, in this one. Here we have some statistics from the world uh, towards uh, to, to 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 try to, to try to frame some of the the discussions we are having when, when, uh, or the world is having when is uh, talking about decarbonization. You see here, you have a, a, a country comparative from 2018, and the world uh, about the, the emissions, the primary energy consumptions, their GDP and their population, and some uh, some factors like the per capita GDP, energy intensity, CO2 intensity, the per capita primary energy consumption, and the per capita energy emissions. It just I will not try to, 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 to argue about the, 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 the consumptions or, or, or the levels in each country. But uh, here, when we start to talk about climate change and we see the, the numbers or figures from Argentina, we see that in, every, in, in, in almost every aspect, we are like uh, uh, some uh, a roundup error, uh, just talking about the uncertainties of climate change and energy emissions, 
and the accountability of those things. So uh, if we start, if we start to conceptualize or we start to 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 think that Argentina has the necessity to move, and I mean this as an Argentinian talking about this problem towards and a very fast energy transition, we will see that if our country decarbonized perfectly all, all its energy metrics, the world, it wouldn't notice. It's like uh, this agreement about the energy transition has to be uh, a, a world effort and countries like Argentina and everyone that is in this meeting, we have our main issues and problems that in the particular uh, aspect of climate change, we are not even the main uh, uh, the, 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 the main narrative of or, or that problem. You see that we, we, we have uh, the, the, the energy transition has to include that conceptual thing that we are different countries, that we have different transitions, we have different challenges. And of course, in Argentina, it's also uh, uh, a way to, uh, to, to transform its energy matrix, but we need to do it in some special manner that also allow us to move away from our uh, precarious uh, macroeconomical situations. I, I think, I, I believe we, we all know about that. Uh, so every country has its uh, resources and res his realities, and we, we we need to account into that when we start to uh, discuss about the energy transitions in in different countries like ours. So the next one, the next one is uh, an historical evolution, and to see uh, and to show that there is. Argentina has already started to make some energy transition. When we hear about uh, the, the taxonomy from the European Union about being natural gas, uh, a green energy source, we, we say, well, we started that path uh, 40 years ago in the 1980s and 1990s. Uh, so to, to start to expand our natural gas use mainly because we had that resource at the at home and now natural gas is part of the 60 percent of the primary energy supply in argentina so we uh, it's not that there there hasn't been an energy transition uh, or we are not working in the energy transition per se but we are not following the main narratives like everyone is suspected about uh, the the energy transition we want to, we want to, uh, we want to decarbonize the energy, the, the 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 energy matrix. I know, I agree with that, but there are main challenges in countries like ours, and we we have like have, like you see in this uh, in in this uh, this slide that there has been some advances in the energy transition previously. In the 1960s and 1970s, there was also some uh, energy policies regarding the, 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 the incorporation of hydroelectricity and nuclear electricity in Argentina that, that made special advances in, in those times. But since the liberalization of the uh, uh, since the li liberalization of the of the energy system, there's always has been a tension between the needs that our energy energy matrix uh, need uh, to to decarbonize uh, and the means that or or the the special logic that the system that the system as a whole has in order to uh, try to advance in that decarbonization. The next one, please. Well, here we see our energy, uh, our GAG uh, inventory since from 1916. 
it was the last presentation in Argentina. I believe we are, uh, uh, the, uh, our government is working towards the next presentation. I believe that will be, will be the base year 2019, I think. Uh, you see that the energy sector is the main source of, uh, of GHG gases, but also the AFOLU sector, mainly livestock, there's another big issue here in Argentina, because you know our country is also uh, a primary source of, uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, cattle and, and uh, by, uh, and green products like soy and wheat. Uh, so there's, there's that's also a great contribution for the the GHG inventory. But nevertheless, here uh, we will see another evolution in the next one. The next one we also had some transformations in the energy in, in the energy mix. Uh, you'll see here that 64 of our uh, electric generation came from thermal energy, uh, mainly fossil fuels, 17% uh, from hydro energy, 12% of renewable and seven from nuclear. But since, the, since that, uh, in 2016 was a, a, a huge uh, program in Argentina, program Renovar, which made some tenders for renewable energy. And we had like 5,000 megawatts of, uh, of presentations of energy, of, of renewable energy. We have currently like 3,000 megawatts already installed from that program. But, and uh, we, we had the, uh, in, in, the, in the figure on of the right, you see that, uh, uh, how, how was evolving our energy, our electric generation matrix. And you see that all that renewable has came to, uh, to, uh, to compensate the, the downfall of the hydroelectricity. We didn't have the chance to, 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 to replace fossil fuels, which was the main objective of that law. Because in the last five, uh, three or four years, there have been a continuous slow in the in the hydro uh, power plants. So uh, we we still continue to to increase renewables. We will we we need to increase to con to to continue to uh, think about hydro uh, hydroelectricity. But you see here that. Uh, the the all the all the gains from renewable energies has came to compensate the losses of hydroelectricity. So that that's another realization about the the energy transition when you rely on such variables uh, sources mainly uh, such as hydro renewable. Uh, you have to take into account that you will need some backup in order to, uh, get to to contemplate those compensations nevertheless in the in the uh, that in the in the next years we will uh, continue to get back to the previous levels of hydro and there will be some gains in the in the in the reducing of thermal energy uh, that will be some advances but you you can have like a, like right now we are having a, a serious drought in 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 the south of Argentina and in the north of Argentina in the in the in the, in the part of the littoral which is come from from Brazil the rivers that you will have some uh, uh, you, you will need something to back up though that uh, particular. Uh, uh, particular variability of those sources. Next, please. Well, uh, we will talk about our current 2030 emissions objectives. In November of 2021, of last year, our country submitted a, a new national determined contribution with a global value that, that should not exceed 
349 million of tons of equivalent, uh, equivalents of CO2. And also in that, that as a global value, it has, it, it comprehends all the, all the sectors, waste, industry, AFOLU and energy sectors. And taking into account the crucial role of the energy sector in the GAG and attending functions granted to the Secretary of Energy, the National Directory of Climate Change, we have been continuously working together and we have a new set of agenda this year to set up two, two particular plans, the long-term strategy and the National Plan of Mitigation and Action of Climate Change. In that, uh, in that framework, in the COP26 in Glasgow, our president had declared that, that there is a national object objective for 2050 to achieve the carbon neutrality in Argentina. Next one, please. Well, in those plans we present, we submitted in, in the last NDC, we, here we have like the new incorporations we are planning to for uh, for the for the next uh, uh, for for the next uh, eight years up to 20, 2030. I, I I almost forgot that we are already on 2022, but you see that we have some hydroelectricity already. These three plant, power plants of hydroelectricity accounting more than 1500 megawatts of installed capacity are already uh, are, are already working towards uh, the, the the completion of these three big power plants this one the first one Anyakwa, is uh, on a on a stream river in Yasireta, the the main uh, the main hydropower plant in Argentina, and this La Barrancosa and Condor Cliff are in the south part of Argentina, in the Patagonia, where we, that we also have like to to discuss how the the transport of that electricity should be uh, should be happen also. Next up to this one, you have like. Uh, in 27 megawatts of nuclear. It's Karen. Karen is a nuclear power plant, a prototype that is a demonstration power plant of an integrated small medium reactor that also uh, that will also allow us to think in expand that nuclear capacity. Uh, thinking in uh, we, we will talk it later how how we should. Uh, uh, how we think that we should we, that we should achieve the energy neutrality. In thermal energy, we will have seven seven hundred and forty megawatts, which are the the completion of two combined cycle plants, Brigadier Lopez and Ensenada de Barragán, which. Uh, right now are working with uh, as a turbo gas uh, power plant that but with a, a, a steam generation we will have a, a, a combined cycle which increases the efficiency of those plants and uh, and for the renewable sites we will have uh, we are we are thinking about this one, this was this particular scenario, uh, almost like 1500 of renewable, uh, 4,500 uh, of renewables in the, uh, in, like in the electric sector, in the, in the electric generator sector, and a thousand megawatts as distributed generation in Argentina. With this, we I I believe we, that this with this plan we will achieve uh, twenty percent of our energy matrix uh, of carbon of our electric matrix uh, from renewables. The next one, please. 
Well, here we have the presentation of our GHE energy scenarios. The, uh, we see our 2016, our baseline from, from that year. How was the, the this is the electric, uh, the, the energy, the energy part of our GAG accountability inventory. So we, we started in 1916, like with 193 millions of uh, CO2 equivalents. And uh, in our, in three different scenarios, in, in, in one, we, we, we stayed in the same level and the other two, we increased it a little bit. You see that the main uh, source of reduction in the energy sector is in the electric generation sector, the, the green one, the first one. In the other sector, we stay, uh, we have a little increase, like in the residential and com commercial and public, there is the, the building sector. Industrial sector, we, we also have a, a little increase regarding each one scenario. And the, the, the big increase is in the transport, uh, in the transport and agricultural sector, which means uh, the, the power of machines, uh, the gas oil, mainly, mainly diesel or gas oil. And you have, uh, even though that we have some electric, uh, electromobili electromobility plants, up to 2030, it's not a big issue here in Argentina. That's not compensates the, the 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 consumption of the on the transport sector. The the next one, please. Here uh, I will talk about how the climate change national cabinet works. The climate change uh, national Gavin, uh, cabinet is uh, it was created by a, by a national law. It was it is led by the chief of cabinet, and it has several uh, uh, stances of governance. The first one you have ministry meetings, led by the chief of cabinet that that they get together and discuss the main topics about the the climate change uh, sector. You will need to understand that here we have like economy as a main source. Also, you have an industry of uh, a ministry of industry development, an industry, a ministry of agriculture, a ministry of uh, uh, of environment. Those are like the main uh, the main ministries that participate in these meetings, or have the main uh, issues. Uh, uh, infrastructure we also have, and. In the ministry meetings, they set up the, the main course of our agenda towards the year. And you have like the national cabinet, the, 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 the climate change national cabinet has some, uh, has some technical and administrative coordination of the focal point meetings, the provinces articulation meetings and the extended meetings that allows the participation of the Third sector, I believe it says uh, the the NGOs, the universities, experts from some some area, and in the focal points, uh, the focal points address uh, some specific uh, subjects uh, like energy or agriculture or infrastructure for uh, for climate change, and the provinces articulation meetings it address this all the issues but regarding our uh, federal structure since the the provinces have a lot of uh, participation in the discussion of the of, of, of these things and the, then you have the working groups that address special uh, special issues also about the the, the national climate uh, the climate change national cabinet the next one please um, Gustav, I just want to know we have about three minutes left for your presentation. Three minutes? I have been talking for three a while. <laughs> well, uh, 
Uh, regarding the, the economic and energy policy objectives, we have like uh, six economic policy objectives that all the, all the things that we have to do regarding the, the energy matches have to be in class, inclusive, dynamic, stable, federal, sovereign, and sustainable. Inclusive is that we have to achieve an energy matrix that promotes energy security and universal access to the energy of the entire population. In particular, to the most vulnerable sectors, we have to, re, to, to think that 40% of Argentina lives under the line of poverty and aiming to reduce inequalities and incorporation the gender perspective. You have to be dynamic in order to drive a greater energy efficiency in all the sector and at the same time promote the development of new technology to greater the energy diversification. And also it has to be stable regarding the investment level in infrastructure just to guarantee energy stability, economic profitability and generation of employment and currency, uh, and currency savings. You have in Argentina, the, 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 the how you say, the, the external sector, the, the, the buy of fuels is a, is a huge thing in Argentina. While maintaining that uh, uh, macroeconomic and, uh, and fiscal balance, that means stable. Federal, that we, we, we have to address that Argentina is a federal country. Each region has its main resources, so we have to develop those resources in the best way. Sovereign, like uh, self explained and sustainable, that if we have to endure those plans, have to endure uh, uh, the, 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 the pass of time. And we have some working energy strategies uh, regarding the our 2030 uh, economic and energy policy objectives the first one is energy efficiency towards electrification infrastructure transport everything low GAG energy supply you have there solar thermal nuclear hydro biofuels biomass wind and solar on the elect on the fossil fuel side, we have gasification. Gasification is also a main source in Argentina, since we have Vaca Muerta, like it's a non uh, non conventional uh, uh, how say reservoir, uh, the oil reservoir. The development of national technological capabilities also a main source in Argentina. We are talking about nuclear, hydro, wind and solar thermal in that uh, in that part. The resilience of the energy system, the federalization of the energy, uh, energy development, and a national strategy for the development of hydrogen. Here, we also have to address some new things about the, the energy transition. If we have to set up a national strategy that I, I believe that Chile has the same, the same uh, focus on the, on, the, on the strategy of hydrogen. We are, as countries, uh, like I stated in the first slide, we don't consume very much energy. So if we have to, if we are going to develop uh, hydrogen, it won't be for our domestic supply. It's our domestic supply is very limited to develop a huge uh, and, and, and to have a need to, 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 to make a, a, a national strategy of hydrogen. But we know that in the world, especially in Europe and the uh, uh, and far east of Asia, China, Korea, uh, and Japan, they will need a lot of hydrogen in the energy transition. So we will become energy producers of hydrogen, and that will lead us to an increase in, in fugitive emissions, in some, uh, it, it, we will have an increase in, in, in emissions regarding that, uh, that strategy. We will become energy producers for the rest of the, of the world, and we, will, uh, and, and, and we have to allow that to, to, to happen because we, 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 we want to, to that, that to happen. So in, in the next one, uh, let's see. Well, I, I 
will pass uh, this one very quickly. This is the National Plan for Action on Climate Change. You see here, this is from the National <coughs> Climate Change National Cabinet. You have here like four instrumental, instrumental lines, transition economies, institutional strengthening, research and development, and action from climate empowerment, and four cross-sectional approaches, gender and diversity, comprehensive risk management, health, and a just labor transition. And you have like the, in the national plan <coughs> for action and, and mitigation of climate change that is up to 2013, 2030, you have like different measures in uh, different sectors. We pass to the next one. Here we have our methodology of uh, elaboration, the energy scenarios. I will stop uh, very, very little here. We have like two main models, LEAP uh, for the energy demand scenarios and some econometric models. And uh, for the long-term expansion, we use the message model that we couple with a local model that it's called Oscar and Margo. It used by the electric, uh, how do you say, the, the, the electric coordinator here in Argentina to see how the, uh, the, the, the stability of that electric mix will be. And there we have our energy scenarios uh, taking into account policies, technologies, international and regional environment, and uh, social economical scenarios from the Ministry of Economy. The next one, please. The next one is the last one. What are our main challenges? I see with a little of envy how the, the Chilean uh, energy transition has uh, uh, has uh, been set into a, a, a institutional uh, framework with the law of the energy transition, with the transmission expansion plan. And here we still have the tension between the needs of the energy transition and the means. Uh, we have the means of uh, an electric uh, system that is still that it still moves by incentives and we have to 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 directionate those incentives so that that's one of the main challenges of uh, the, uh, the the institutional order of the energy planning the energy planning in argentina is still is still non non binding i believe it says with that we are we just make energy scenarios you don't, you you don't set uh, a course with that uh, with that energy planning to just show what are some pictures about the future and the and, and the actors in the sector where they, they will evaluate which are the better for them and they will take their own uh, incentives to move towards them a greater interministerial, interjurisdictional sectoral coordination, which is, uh, which is being addressed uh, by the National Climate Change uh, Cabinet. Also, the capacity development of modeling, measuring of emissions, creation of public policies, the promotion of measures in climate change in, in the in the need of economic growth. Here we have like. Uh, a set of two or three uh, lines of actions that we we need to 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 take into account uh, to that they are not innovative. Like when I say hydro hydropower plants, Argentina has only uh, built one third one fourth of their hydro capacity in all the rivers of, of our country. So we have a huge space to advance in hydropower plants. And also that will have uh, like a second, uh, a, a, a second benefit from uh, the, the better management of our rivers since climate change will give us the, the trends of climate change stated that Argentina is going to transform in a more arid region or the all the every 
uh, all the the incentives towards uh, the solar thermal energy for water heating. That's also the, one of the of the main the, the, the promotion of these adaptive measures. The, the last one is obtaining economical financial resources that allow local development of technologies that encourage the energy transition. This greatly uh, tied to the last one. We also need to address the energy integration here with my colleagues in Chile. Every technical work that you do about energy integration is status and or the results are that it's a better, uh, it's a win-win situation, but nevertheless, the, the energy integration, it moves towards, uh, it moves very slowly between the countries in the region, mainly because not only the economical aspects are the, the, the only ones that are the, the policymakers are seeing, regarding the, uh, the the energy integration so i believe that this is all i don't know if i that that was um fantastic thank you so much um gustavo for the incredibly informative presentation i personally was really inspired to see all the progress in both Argentina and Chile during the first two presentations um today so thank you so much um well, we are th going oh sorry thank you very much <laughs> Thank you, Gustavo. Um, so we're going to save the rest of the Q&A until the end of the session, um, but uh, Harrison and Gustavo, please feel free to answer questions in the chat um, that, that might come up. Um, so I'm now very pleased to introduce Ms. Rehab Bidar, who is the Director General of Energy Efficiency and Climate Change Projects at the Ministry of Electricity in Egypt. And, um, oh, Great, Ms. Bidar, if you could please turn on your microphone and camera for your presentation, that would be excellent. Thank you. Yes, please. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. It's a little, the body is a little low, but. Uh, may I want to raise my hand, my, my thumb? I think I, I can hear you fairly well. So I think I think we can proceed. If you would like to turn on your video, happy for you to do that as well. Okay, I am uh, 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 I work for uh, Energy Efficiency and Climate Change uh, Unit in the Ministry of Electricity. Uh, and thank you for Yes. Hi, hi everybody. Uh, I am Hafidir. I work in Energy Efficiency and Climate Change Unit in the Ministry of Electricity in uh, Egypt. Uh, I'm pleasured uh, today to um, Make this presentation about uh, uh, the APC sector activity regarding energy efficiency and uh, uh, mitigation actions to reduce the emissions. Yes, please, the second. The uh, <coughs> Egypt uh, Vision 2030 and Energy Strategy are the constitution and large umbrella that contain uh, all uh, uh, the uh, acts going under the electricity sector. Egypt vision uh, is uh, maximize the efficient use of various energy resources and competitive environment, a uh, manner focusing on renewable energy. And also complies with uh, uh, SDG goals. Uh, energy strategy 2025. Uh, the, the target of renewable energy until uh, 2022 was 20% uh, from peak group, and we achieved this target in uh, last year uh, or in this year. That's when we are now ahead of one year uh, of our schedule. The energy strategy uh, 2035 <coughs> uh, consists of two main pellets. One of them uh, for renewable energy, to increase the share of renewable energy to be 42 uh, by 2035. Uh, and the other pillar is for energy efficiency to achieve 80% uh, uh, reduction or saving of energy 
from the base year of 2010. Uh, the strategy um, uh, has uh, excluded the coal from energy mix and replaced by renewable energy. Uh, private sector investment will also play, uh, play a critical and crucial role in achieving these goals. Secondly, second slide, yes. Uh, these are the electricity uh, structure efforts to, uh, for updating legislative infrastructure. Uh, it is started in 2014. Uh, by uh, updating uh, the ministry, uh, updating the, um, the name of our ministry, the ministry to include renewable energy, to emphasize uh, about renewable energies. Uh, in the same year, the tariff reform program was adopted and announced for uh, five years. Uh, it was proposed to be uh, completed in uh, 2019, but because of COVID, it uh, extended to 2023. Uh, last in, um, after in September in 2014, the cabinet agreed the issuance of the entire for electricity that is uh, from renewable energy resources to be um, built and its prices were issued by Prime Minister to be, uh, in October 2014. Uh, after that, establishing the law of Maria has been amended to allow the uh, new and renewable energy authority to establish companies by itself or in partnership with private sector. In the same year, in December 2014, law was issued to encourage generating to electricity from renewable energy sources to full uh, uh, means of um, contracting. In April, uh, 2016, electricity law was declared, and the balance of electricity law is, is establishment of competitive electricity market, which is based on the lateral contracts in adopting of the uh, concept of eligible uh, customers, third party access, establishment of transmission system operation. Uh, on October uh, 2016, the second phase of the winter flood, and recently in uh, April 2022, Egypt Era Circular Book 6 uh, was conducted to update uh, the net metering scheme to encourage renewable energy, uh, especially that Egypt will uh, host the COP conference uh, in uh, next November. The second slide, please. Um, Ms. Ms. Vida, it's it's a difficult, a little bit difficult to hear you. Is it possible to move closer to the microphone or? Um... Okay, I'll try to move the laptop. Is this better? That is better. Thank you so much. Okay, oh, sorry for that. Uh, this is the, um, uh, no, I think this is not the next slide. There are two slides before that. Slide number 40. The slide after that. Um, there is something. Um, okay, the next please. Oh, there is two slides missed, but uh, okay, go to the, the uh, before the uh, yes, previous slide. Uh, this um, uh, figure shows the uh, how uh, Egypt tackled the uh, shortage of energy from 2014 until now. There is a fast track plan uh, uh, in below. This is in color red. This uh, uh, added the capacity of about 4 gigawatt in the year of 2015, and then um, uh, the um, uh, finished the completed uh, generation uh, plants, adding uh, another uh, uh, another uh, three gigawatt, and then <coughs> a completion of a uh, uh, megawatt plants of Siemens uh, with total capacity of 1400 uh, megawatt. Um, uh, there was a combined uh, conversion of simple cycle to combined combined uh, cycle that gives. Um, 
about to be the what without extra fuel. Uh, and also a job the private sector BD and uh, solar wind capacities is about to be there. Uh, 98 of the uh, power uh, generation plants in Egypt uh, based on uh, natural gas, which is uh, low carbon and high efficient fuel. Next, please. The upgrading the transmission and distribution system. Uh, includes uh, improvement and upgrading the transmission and distribution networks, including extra high voltage substations, control centers, as well as smart effects where investment exceeds $4 billion. Uh, the strategy is relying on transition to smart effects, which will contribute significantly to improve electricity efficiency and reduce carbon emissions. Uh, also, serious actions have been taken to develop the transmission and distribution networks in six years to handle the length of the um, 5 kV voltage networks has been increased by 1.5 times, and also substitution uh, substations at the same uh, voltage have increased more than four times, and distribution networks and four centers are being set up. 15 of them are the uh, under construction. Uh, also depends on the um, prepaid and smart meters, dissemination of prepaid and smart meters. Next, please. Renewable energy. Uh, this is the, um, uh, the, the current situation of renewable energy. Uh, the, uh, when, uh, the capacities of wind energy, solar, and hydro, total renewable energy in the schools are uh, almost 60 gigawatts. Uh, the important here, uh, very important here to uh, mention that uh, the um, uh, greenhouse emission reductions uh, due to release renewable energy are also are, um, the same as the um, uh, the, the the high efficient generation power plants uh, deducted from uh, greenhouse gas. Second, please. This is the project, the current situation, and also in the uh, uh, under implementation till uh, 2023, the total capacities uh, will be almost 9 gigawatts. Second. The uh, NIATU Energy Efficiency Action Plan uh, 2. Uh, uh, this is the action plan, uh, uh, like a short term action plan to implement the strategy. Second, please. This is the goal uh, in the strategy to achieve the energy saving of 18% and 20 uh, million of corn uh, oil equivalent including the sectors of transport, industry, and building. Second, please. The main drivers of the electricity sector to us optimal use of energy are the, um, to uh, reduce greenhouse gas emissions and reduce high current consumption intensity, uh, use domestic electricity consumption, and also safer will rate use for energy generation and last improve electrical loss of the plants. Second, please. Supported uh, logistics for the NIA. Uh, 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 this um, action plan was issued under the guidance of EU directive in accordance with the requirements of the Arab Energy Efficiency Guidelines. Uh, it complies with the objective of Egypt vision in the strategy. Uh, the plan aims to uh, activate the article of the electricity law and its executive regulations issued in May uh, 2016 regarding energy efficiency improvement requirements requested by law. The plan includes a supervisory board for energy efficiency activity under the chairmanship of the Ministry of Electricity and Renewable Energy. Uh, uh, my um, uh, the unit or I related to energy efficiency of climate change unit is the technical um, form uh, 
uh, for this steering committee to supervise the implementation of energy efficiency activities uh, and have the role of coordinate and support energy efficiency and other management. This shows the key elements of national energy efficiency plan in two. Uh, it uh, includes supply side and also the demand side. Uh, completion of the institutional framework, and after that, establishment, establish monitoring, verification, and fully up system and better governance of energy efficiency data. Establish the mechanism of finance energy efficiency activities. Improve uh, measures to improve energy efficiency that contains um, activities uh, inside our uh, sector or outside sector in uh, cross-cutting with other uh, uh, ministries, training and capacity building, cooperating with uh, civil society. Uh, this uh, energy efficiency, uh, the reduction in fuel consumption. Um, this shows the reduction of fuel consumption from 2014 until now. It's almost um, uh, about 13.6 percent. It also make a huge impact on uh, greenhouse gases. Okay. Um, the energy efficiency on the main side that's included in the plan. Uh, it's uh, including uh, more than one sector like residential building, industrial lighting, and surveillance color. Residential, uh, uh, in residential sector, um, some of the examples like of oh, dissemination of solar water heaters uh, in new cities and residents and replacing one efficient equipment. Uh, we focused on this stage on uh, uh, cooling equipment like ACs and refrigerators. Uh, in building, uh, energy efficiency food in building, uh, we still have the uh, inactive, this food or in, uh, in this inactive state uh, right now. Uh, solar energy technology and hotels in commercial building. In industrial sector, we have uh, many applications like the use of carbon technologies in industrial applications. Uh, and also, uh, there is a project for use of high efficient uh, electric motors in the industry. And uh, also, uh, to encourage solar energy applications in heating process in industry. The lighting system, uh, there is a great um, efforts in public lighting using green materials and efficient systems. Um, uh, about four, four million, four million uh, bulbs or artificial bulbs estimated and directed in public lighting uh, system. And also uh, we help the distribution of uh, red lamps for the initial sector, uh, about 13 million lamps. But now the market, um, I think the, the, the market um, uh, is for the um, uh, two million, uh, two hundred million, uh, two hundred million million dollars. Uh, it's a campaign for raising awareness of energy efficiency and rational energy use. Um, we focus on media campaigns also to um, to raise awareness for the uh, regarding the energy efficiency. Next, please. Uh, this um, uh, section, including the efforts of uh, uh, in cooperation uh, in energy sector and environment sector, include to um, uh, make some efforts regarding climate change. The next, please. Um, Ms. Vidar, uh, yeah. if there's a way to help with the audio again, it'd be great if you could move closer to the mic again, possibly. Folks are having trouble hearing. Sorry? Um, yeah, I think that's better. We're just having some trouble hearing you. Okay, okay. Thank you. Um, do you need to repeat the, the uh, previous slide? No, I think I think we're okay. Um, I think okay. I was able to hear it. Others were having some trouble, but I think it's okay. Thank that's you. good. Uh, okay, the uh, uh, 
reduction in CO2 emissions uh, from 2014 to uh, until now. Uh, it was, uh, the curve shows there was a huge, there is a huge reduction. Uh, I think it's clear. The second piece. Uh, this is the great emission factor and uh, also decreased uh, from uh, uh, 0.552 to uh, 0.367 due to a uh, high efficient uh, generation power plant and also to a uh, high efficient fuel use. Uh, I want to mention about the um, uh, monitoring in the stations that we erected in the power generation plants. Uh, there are uh, 27. I think uh, we are, the, this project is almost finished. Uh, these stations to monitor the, um, the environment and the emissions uh, produced from generation power plants. Next, please. This new shared project is based on electric and vehicle uh, <coughs> technology and waste for energy and hydrogen and water dissemination. And these are the details of each project. Uh, for hydrogen, um, uh, a high level working group from various ministries has been formed to set roadmap for future steps for using hydrogen, which includes studying the opportunities for uh, localizing the hydrogen industry in Egypt and cooperate with any of the developed countries in the field of hydrogen to benefit from the experience and implement pilot projects. Uh, we are now in the stage of um, developing uh, a, a complete strategy or an integrated strategy for hydrogen. Uh, for electric uh, vehicles, an incentive tariff has been proposed for electric vehicle charging and it's currently in the process of approval by Egyptian cabinet. Um, I think uh, it is, uh, uh, this step is uh, completed now and finished. Uh, for the um, uh, uh, water dissemination, the land required to be approved for allocation have been identified and five years of time are taken in to reduce approximately 2.9 million uh, metric cubic per day. Uh, for the waste to energy uh, in the compensation tariff for replacing electricity, uh, with this uh, was defined to be 1.4 uh, Egyptian uh, yester per kilowatt hour, uh, and expected electricity generated from waste is uh, 300 megawatt for the coming five years. Uh, and um, I think that's all for this uh, future projects and new technologies. And thank you. Great, thank you so much, um, Ms. Ms. Bidar. That was an excellent presentation um, and very good to hear about the really exciting and leading work that is underway in Egypt to support clean energy analysis and action. Um, so I think we are going to have time for just a few questions um, in the chat here before we move on to the next session. Um, let me go ahead and pull up the chat. Um, so I think we'll go back to uh, Gustavo first. There's a question here from um, Daniela Roth, who is the country coordinator under the Net Zero World Action Center for Argentina. She said, you clearly highlighted the challenges that Argentina faces in aligning climate change mitigation with social and economic growth as part of a just energy and equitable energy transition. Are there specific measures or technologies that you have identified with the greatest potential to tackle both of these issues? having high potential impact on GHG emissions, but also providing clear social and economic benefits. And what do you see as the greatest barriers or challenges for their near-term and wide-scale wide deployment as part of Argentina's decarbonization strategy? Easy question there, Gustavo, right? Easy question. <laughs> I, I was just going to say, <laughs> I was typing one, one word there in the answer. It was financing, just the main one. Um, I mean, we have like this huge, huge, huge uh, uh, macroeconomic and social issues here in Argentina that you, 
when I when I see the discussions in the in the world about the energy transition and some economists uh, asking for the degrowth of the economies, I, I have like the responsibility here in Argentina to say that I, I mean, if we are going to a degrowth strategy, that means that the poverty in the sectors uh, are going to be a, a, a huge, a lot huger. Uh, so. Maybe we will reduce our uh, GHG emissions, but we will also have another environmental problems that since you know, like the, the main problem in the, in the environment is the poverty, the poverty of societies. So our, we, I believe that we, 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 we need to address all the changes. I, I, I stated in the slide, I, which slide was? Uh, the 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 10th slide when when i stated that we we have like uh energy supply uh, the i mean i mean like the goal is important but also the path is as important as the goal and i will take it to into account the 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 strategy that we, we, we as a country used in 2016. It was the, the Renovar program, which started with, we, 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 that had the aim of uh, including a lot of renewables in the energy metric in Argentina, but was, uh, <clears throat> it was a, a, an international bidding process from companies from all the world that they made some biddings about uh, wind, uh, wind and solar and all the, the, the huge advances in Argentina in the renewable sector started there mainly. And you see in the, uh, that, that it's 12% it's of the energy matrix now, mm -hmm. it, is a, it is a lot in, in three and four years. So it, it, it was very good, but also, that bidding process uh, stated that the, all the all the projects uh, were able to import all the uh, all the equipments and the contracts were uh, dominated in American dollars. So in 2018, Argentina started in a new uh, uh, one of the recurrent crises uh, with with inflation and with the depreciation of the Argentinian peso. And you have like a thousand megawatts of, the, of that Renovar program that, uh, uh, that were able to, to meet the, the, the found requirements to, in, in order to uh, complete uh, the, 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 the project, uh, that, that particular project. And now, what we initially seemed like there were good prices, 60, 70 dollars per megawatt, which is mainly the price of the megawatt in Argentina, uh, uh, now are nominated in dollars. That is a huge problem for the balance account of Argentina. So we, I, I believe uh, we don't have the rush to go into such kind of programs like uh, including 3,000 megawatts of new wind, solar, uh, wind or solar or anything, but we need to start to make the our own path regarding the construction of wind mills here in Argentina or the the use of the hydroelectric uh, spare capacity that we have that is mostly local and you have industry that can make this kind of uh, it, uh, of kind of uh, projects here in Argentina in order to move the economy as a whole uh, infrastructure pro uh, infrastructure programs are also equally important uh, we have here like 97 yesterday I was listening to the radio. 97% of all the transport cargo is go by, by truck. 97% in a country with this extension. So if we put again the trains in Argentina, uh, you will have a, a huge energy, energy gains in efficiency. 
in order to move that, I don't know, half of the of that cargo by by, by rail. Also, uh, I don't know, infrastructure projects like uh, subways. Uh, each uh, city with one million cit uh, citizens uh, should have uh, should have a subway, in order to allow the the people to move more efficiently in the city. Not only thinking about electric mobility. Electric mobility is the replacement of uh, one kind of uh, technology for another kind of technology. But we also need to address that those those kind of things. Uh, are hard to discuss here in Argentina because of these all recurrent problems and thinking in the long term. And you are always uh, trying to solve the, the next month, the, the next year. Yeah. So uh, I believe those are like the main challenges here in Argentina. Also, well, uh, I see, I, I, I will say it again. I see the, the, the process that Chile has led to his energy, trans, uh, his energy transition, and I kind of envy because they are very, very neat and very clear about the goals and the, the instruments that they use in order to achieve that, uh, that energy transition. So, uh, um, well, we have a lot of challenges here, but our main one is, I believe, is to, to again, to, to, to make a path in order that that energy transition also allow the country to uh, increase its productivity and to take into account the, its production, its industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a really challenging and complex question and, and really appreciated those insightful thoughts, Gustavo, both um, in relation to Argentina and Chile as well. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Please. <laughs> great. Okay. I think we're going to move on to one more question um, during the session today for um, Ms. Rehab Bidar. And the question is, how do your modeling efforts directly inform policy and investment decisions in your country, and what is the process for moving from analysis to decisions? And um, Ms. Ms. Bida, are you still there? Or perhaps other colleagues um, yes. from the government of Egypt? Would, nope. You asked about the, uh, the, the strategies? Um, yeah, so the question was around um, taking analysis and modeling that um, is done within Egypt and then using the information to um, inform different types of policies or decision areas and kind of what that process looks like um, in Egypt. Yes, I, uh, the, uh, our strategy developed these uh, teams and models. Uh, it was developed by uh, Charis on the Charis program and the support of uh, uh, supporting of European Union um, for proposing uh, policies with um, uh, the, the, the uh, of the uh, policy um, uh, depends on the uh, our needs and um, our um, uh, I mean the, the, the policy like um, uh, inside renewable energy or the um, uh, inside people to uh, go to uh, saving uh, for energy consumption. Uh, it depends on our needs, so to uh, define our needs to first the vote and then propose the policy and uh, um, make the, the, um, the proposal to the Prime Minister. Uh, so uh, I think this is the cycle to set the policy from uh, bottom to, uh, uh, to top approach. Or sometimes it comes it comes from a top to bottom approach. 
there is no one style for proposing the policy. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Thank you so much um, for those insights and thoughts. Um, all right, so I think now it is time to conclude our session. If there are other questions that come up in the chat, it'll be great if the presenters um, can respond within the chat. I'd like to again thank all of our um, really excellent speakers um, today for their incredibly valuable and informative presentations. Um, and also note that we're very much looking forward to continued collaboration through Net Zero World. And so now I will turn it back to um, Gunter. Thank you very much.